Money will fix every problem in a city, but there's not enough money. A budget's not about money so much as it is about priorities. Government leadership makes these choices. If you're a leader, a city council member, a mayor, a city manager, finance director, or CFO, this video is for you. Imagine your first day in your new role at a city. Congratulations on the new job. You're eager to make some improvements, achieve great successes. But do you think to ask yourself if there may be any hidden surprises? Whether you signed up for it or not, as a new leader, you, knew, you now have the responsibility for any and all lurking financial challenges. Dealing with known issues is challenging enough, but unknowns can catch you off guard. If you appear uninformed or unprepared for serious financial setbacks that could have been prevented, your reputation can suffer serious harm. You've staked your professional reputation on this city, so it's essential to make thorough discoveries as quickly as possible. Now, you didn't get to where you are today not knowing to ask for a copy of the budget, so you can get a complete citywide overview. But the bad news is there's a hidden danger in that assumption, a big budget blind spot. But the good news is I can give you one crucial question, often overlooked, that will change you, put you on a better path for the success you want. I'll tell you what it is up front, then I'll spend the rest of this video helping you get better answers, which surprisingly are not easy to get. You must ask this one question. What is not in the budget? I've yet to work for a city where all departments aren't somewhat frustrated or hesitant about the budget process. They're used to being told there's not enough money, so they have to prioritize their own needs and wants. Every department knows what didn't get funded. They know what's not in the budget in their area. Some are distrustful about the budget process and resent decisions made in the past. Others may be concerned about being blamed for problems they inherited but weren't given the resources to solve. Some may have given up asking, leaving you in the dark. So this means getting answers may be challenging. Just asking the right question will not get you the right answer because it is complex. So I've got three suggestions. First, ask multiple times. Some people might be reluctant to share, but persistence, relationship building, and trust are vital to gaining a complete and truthful assessment. Plus, every department is normally busy. You'll need to convince them that you genuinely want to explore all options, prioritize wisely, and most importantly, you want clarity without assigning blame. Secondly, you might need to ask folks to do some homework. As a manager overseeing the whole agency, you don't want quick, easy answers. Done right, there's research involved and sometimes conversations with many levels of staff. So give this the time it deserves. A citywide complete picture is not simple. Lastly, be ready to get what you asked for. Uncovering what's not in the budget puts new pressure on you. What you're asking is for everyone to help you grow a list of problems. However, if you refrain from punishing people for delivering bad news, you'll get a comprehensive picture and make more informed decisions. Taking responsibility seriously and wisely prioritizing every available dollar should make you thankful to those who help you see clearly. Now, I have a whole separate video on this, but here's a refresher on how to prioritize. The Eisenhower matrix weighs importance versus urgency. Things that are both urgent and important have to get done now. It's the other areas that we struggle with. Urgent things that are unimportant drain resources and probably should be avoided. Unimportant and non-urgent things should be kept on the list so we don't lose them. But it's the important things that are not urgent should, that should be planned and focused. But real world budgeting has some other factors. Things that you have the money for and were behind on getting to should be done immediately. Things that we have money for that are new ideas should be deferred or at least held. The perfect answer is we'll put it on the wait list and reprioritize. Also, there could be the possibility for grant funding or something like that that you wouldn't want to waste general fund money for. For things that are new that we don't have the money for, the wait list is where we capture and don't lose them. And it's the important things that we don't have money for that should be planned and focused on. So now that we've made this a 4D chess game, how do you sort all of these? We create a worksheet that looks like this. You type in the descriptions, then make a judgment about their importance, urgency, new or existing, and whether there might be other funding for them. You sort them and you should get a pattern like this. The items that sort to the top are all green. Now remember, some of these were judgment calls. So that's where you go back to your management team or your city manager or mayor or your governing body and you ask them to weigh in on prioritizing. 
This is what keeps you from nickel and diming yourself to a place that nibbles away your available funding and you find out that you didn't do what was truly important. And most importantly, you captured what was not in the budget. You managed priorities and you avoided surprises. I hope this video has been giving you some insight into how city finances really work. Identifying those hidden ticking time bombs can make all the difference and secure a successful long-term future. After all, admitting you have a problem is the first step towards recovery. I'd appreciate your feedback and comments as I consider future content, but I really hope this video reaches others who need it. In finance, our success lies in helping others succeed. This video aims to help you because it's your efforts in managing your city's budget that will contribute to the financial success of your city and make it a better place. Thanks for watching.